Mother's Day. Let's stand and praise the Lord together. Welcome to Central Assembly. Glad to be here. Come on, put your hands together with us this morning. Believe there's nothing impossible for our God. Come on, let's sing it together. Just one word. Just one word. You calm a storm that surrounds me. But just one word. The darkness has to retreat. Come on, let's sing it together. Just one touch. Just one touch. I feel the presence of this. We sense your presence, Lord. Come on, sing it with me, just one word.
dwell in our hearts, dwell in our hearts, making room for you, Jesus. And here is where I lay it every burden, every crown. This is my surrender, this is my surrender.
sing it, I will make, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Just take a moment in your own words to commit your life, to surrender all. God, here I am. Here I am. I surrender. I make room for you. Take my will. Take my emotions. Take my dreams and plans, God. I lay them at your feet. Receive my life as worship. I will make room, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Come on church, declare it today Your name is power Your name is healing Your name Speak the name of Jesus. Over. 
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus.
together. Praise God from whom all blessings. Praise God from whom all blessings fall. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, step in, Lord, to our lives as your presence fills this place. You're mighty. No one is like you. There's nothing our God can't do. So as we've worshiped you today and said we surrender all to you, we pray you whose name is powerful and great, who sets free, who makes to live what's dead. Lord Jesus, step in, we pray into our lives. Step into the dark places. Step into the places we've been afraid to open up to you. Step in, Lord, to the places of hope and possibility in our lives. Lord Jesus, mighty and great King, we thank you for your triumph. We thank you for your love for us. And we thank you what you do when we open our lives to you and you step in. Thank you. Yes to your forgiveness today. Hallelujah. Just receive that if you need it today. Yes to freedom today if you need that. Just receive it in the name of Jesus. Yes to healing. You're present to heal, oh God. Just, we just receive right now in Jesus' name. Yes to your healing power. Hallelujah. Yes to hope if we've been despairing. Yes, to hope in your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, to your life, your overflowing spirit. Fill us full today, oh God. And we thank you for your presence with us. Thank you. Hallelujah. In our lives, in our families, in our city, in our nation that so needs you, oh God, yes to your powerful work. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We love you and we thank you today. Hallelujah. Yes to you, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have a... F Amen, Jesus. That's right, Lord. When we were worshiping and we sang that lyric about Jesus stepping into our darkness, especially hit me this morning. And uh, so, thank you. These are spontaneous things; are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, tongues, interpretation. We don't plan these things, but they are a word from God to our hearts, just underscoring. In this case, He steps into darkness, and we all have hope, and so we say yes to Him. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Well, wonderful to be together today. Thanks for adjusting the time. We're sorry we had to cancel Wednesday night. There were massive power outages here in the middle part of town, and uh, we were told they'd probably be out all evening. So sorry we couldn't gather Wednesday night, but so glad to see you here. And thanks for adjusting time between 9 o'clock service, 1045, to be all together. And thank all those of you who served us in the, in the lobby. If you came early, it was wonderful, wonderful refreshments. And, time to be together. It's Mother's Day. 
Happy Mother's Day to those of you who are moms. And for every one of them in this room, I can say pretty confidently, we all had a mom. <laughs> so we're probably all here because we had a mom. So we honor all the moms and uh, all the ladies today, especially, and every one of you, welcome. Why don't you turn before you're seated, just uh, say hi to somebody and welcome them today. God bless you. I've never been part of a small group at Central until this. Since I started coming in 2009, I've been part of the, the worship ministry and I've helped in, in the kids ministry. It's, it's awesome to, to come to church in the mornings and see people from mom's group and say, hi, I know you, and, and have all this, just this different connection at church. It's refreshing. On, on the weeks when I can't make it to the mom's group, I, I, feel, I feel that it's missing. I feel that that fellowship is missing. Um, and so when I'm there, I'm not, I'm not working, I'm not volunteering, I'm not making bottles or changing diapers, I'm just there. And there's very few times in life when I feel like I can just show up and just be there. We've been here about seven months, and I knew the first Sunday that we came that I needed to take the step and jump in um, for it to feel like home. We were in a season of life where we needed community so bad, and we needed friendship, and we were hungry for that. And I, I knew that in order to, to survive and to make this, make this work, make a big church work, we had to connect. So I remember reaching out to Liz pretty early on and asking about the options for groups. I signed up for several, and I think that's okay because not every group is for everyone. Like, you will find your different people. Um, so I went and visited a couple of different groups and landed with this Friday group and just really connected with pretty much every lady. I remember what it was like to be a mom of toddlers and how just stressful times could be and just how tired I would be. And having a mom who has walked that before was, I mean, it sustained me. I just challenge the ladies to really take that step and reach out and join a group, join several groups if you have to. Um, just find, find your people here. Well, good morning, Central Assembly. We are so thrilled to have you join us on this Mother's Day. Welcome to those of you here and those of you joining us online. It is a joy and a pleasure to join with you this morning. If you are new or you're visiting, or honestly, if you've been here for a while and you're just looking for a way to jump in, to connect, we invite you to fill out the Connect card. You can find them there in front of you. And if you are online, you can click the Connect With Us link at the top of your screen there. And we would love to do just that. We would love to connect with you. Um, how awesome was that video? Wasn't that just so wonderfully inspiring and encouraging? And this morning out in the lobby, just to see people connecting and talking and sharing. And that's our heart's desire. We want everyone here to connect to a group at Central Assembly. So women, get in a group. Men, get in a group. We would love to do that. We'd love to help you do that. You can go to centralassembly.org backslash groups to find out more. 
And while you're there at centralassembly.org, you can check out everything else that's going on here at Central. You can find events, you can find service schedules, you can find video resources, so much more. One of the things that you can check out right now on our website are details about the prayer initiatives that we are starting here at Central. We have three incredible options for you. On Tuesdays from noon until one, we meet right here in the sanctuary, and this is a time of guided prayer. We will meet in here for guided prayer. We pray for the services. We pray for outreaches. We pray for our pastors, and this prayer time is led by members of the group, and then it usually concludes with walking through the sanctuary, praying over each and every spot here that we join here throughout the week. So join us on Tuesdays. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. we will meet in room 125. And Wednesday night prayer is a time to pray for our Wednesday night activities here at Central. We also pray for the different ministries of Central and just ways that we're making a difference here around the world. And then Thursday, Thursday we have an opportunity. We meet in the chapel from noon until one. And this is a time spent in prayer to lift up prayer requests that have come to us throughout the week. These requests will be scrolling there on the screen. It's also also just a really great time to just spend some quiet time in the presence of the Lord. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, join us here in prayer. And before we pray today, we want to take time to recognize our uh, weekly footprint focus. So today on Mother's Day, we would like to honor the women that have made a historic contribution, the women that continue to contribute in missions across America and around the world. Women have led, they've participated in Bible training and evangelism, discipleship, church planting, specialized ministries to women and to children and to youth. They have also been a part of critical ministries for our most marginalized and needy of the world. Women have applied patience, lots of patience and diligence in Bible translation, curriculum development, and so much more. Their efforts in missions have had a global footprint, have had a huge impact around the world. And so we want to honor, we want to appreciate, we want to thank the many, many women that have gone before, that are currently serving in their efforts to spread the gospel around the world. So if you would join me in praying. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for a day of celebration, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness, Lord. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for the many, many women, Lord, that have served in your name, Lord, that have gone great distances, that have made huge sacrifices, Lord, all for your glory. Lord, we just lift up. We lift up women today. We lift up women in missions around the world today, Lord. We pray that you would just continue to strengthen, that you would continue to call and to equip and to empower women around the world, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your name, Lord, your glory would spread to the very ends of the earth, Lord Jesus. We are so honored, Lord, and we are so thankful that you choose to use us, Lord, that you invite us in to your work here on earth, Lord. We thank you for that. We praise you, Lord. We offer up this morning to you, Lord. We say, have your way. We pray all of this in the precious, the powerful, the mighty name of Jesus, amen. It's bandaging the broken, a washing filthy feet. Here I am, Lord, send me. If it's loving one another, even when we don't agree. Here I am, Lord, send me.
if I'm poor or if I'm wealthy, I'll serve you just the same. Here I am, Lord, send me on the mountain or the valley. I will choose to praise. Here I am. The simple, the simple phrase, here I am. and sing that with us this morning. Here I am.
Lord, I thank you for the many in this house that support our Footprint Missions Fund. And as we pay tribute today to ladies that have gone around the world, courageous women of God, that you put your spirit on, Lord, we join with them and say, Lord, send me. Whether a guy or a girl, a man or a woman here, we say, send me. Help us, Lord, to be a part of what you are doing in our world. And we thank you for people who reached out to us and our lives were changed as they ministered the life of Jesus to us. And thank you for those you're sending. We bless you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, you may be seated. We're going to take it a little bit informal today. We'll be picking up our Just Jesus series out of the Gospel of Mark next week. We'll be looking at the first part of chapter 6. But I just wanted to talk to you ladies today, and you guys can listen in. And uh, it's just going to be kind of a flow of consciousness thing, I think, today. Although we're going to end up with some really powerful scriptures that I've been thinking a lot about and have meant a lot to me. Uh, we're, we're grateful for you. If you are a mom, happy Mother's Day. Sandy and I didn't get off on the best foot this morning. Um, I set my alarm and I got up way before my alarm and forgot to turn it off. And when it finally dawned on me, I should sneak into the room and turn it off while Sandy was still sleeping. She was up there, it was going off, and she couldn't for the life of her figure out how to turn it off, it looked like. And so I said, okay, um, I said, uh, oh, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> that did not go down well. And she is a great mom. I'm going to borrow the words uh, to get us going from Amy Young, um, who uh, said everything that's in my heart as a pastor to say to you as we begin. Uh, to those of you who gave birth this year to, their f to your first child, this year we want to say we celebrate with you. Uh, to those of you who lost a child this year, we're here mourning with you. For those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badges of food stains, we admire you and appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or kids running away, we, we, with you too, we mourn. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes and prods and tears and disappointments, we walk with you. Please forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are adoptive moms and foster moms and mentor moms and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. And to those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance from your children, we're here sitting with you today. You're not alone. To those who lost their moms this past year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we, we acknowledge that experience and pain. To those who lived through driving tests and medical tests and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children. We mourn that life perhaps so far hasn't turned out the way you longed it to be. And to those who step parent, we walk with you on those complex paths. And to those who envision lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream hasn't come to pass yet, we, we grieve with you. And those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, emptier nests, we grieve and rejoice with you. <laughs> Couldn't believe how fun. I love my girls, but it was fun, empty nest. <laughs> to those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child even still in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life right now, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our midst.
Amen? We have real warriors in our midst. I want to, if you'll indulge me, just give tribute to two of the most significant women formationally in my life and two wonderful moms. The first is my wife, Sandy. Here's a picture of her with our two daughters. Uh, Sandy uh, had our two girls in her late 30s, uh, two years apart. We had walked that very painful journey of infertility and had come to the conclusion we would have no children. That's a painful journey, but uh, the kind of God's surprises for us. And yes, I was the redhead. Um, <laughs> when they were growing up and this big mop of curly hair on each of their heads and Sandy would be this Thor, you know, and the, and, and the cashier would say, uh, do those belong to you? <laughs> and, and Sandy would say, believe it or not, uh, yeah, they're mine. And uh, so Meredith on the left and Angela on the right are younger. Uh, and, and Sandy is really invested in them in an amazing way. She has this real heart connection with them. I'm grateful. They both live in different places in Texas. And, uh, and, and yet we, we keep in touch. And Sandy has been such a spiritual mentor for them. One of the things I really appreciate about what Sandy did in our family was she created, because this didn't come as intuitively to me, she created um, a place of emotional safety. You had to be respectful, but as long as you were respectful, it was safe to tell the truth and be honest. And that was a huge gift to our family. And then, Sandy's not only a mom, but she's also now a mother-in-law. Here's a picture of our girls with the husbands they married a few years ago. And uh, boy, she has just an interesting relationship with each of them. Uh, no mother-in-law jokes here. Uh, she has, I, I think they really like Sandy. Uh, the guy on the right is Michael. He graduated from Oral Roberts University in music education, which was Sandy's field. That, that's what she has her degrees in as well. And so they, they just have this thing together. They have the same career. And, uh, and Sandy, uh, Sandy's always following Michael's music students in their competitions, always watching videos, always saying, hey, you should listen to this. And so uh, she just loves that. Danny on the left, when he was an evangelist student here, he used to sit up here with all the college students who are gone now for the summer. But he used to sit up there before we even knew him. And Danny uh, graduated from Evangel with an accounting major and a biblical studies major. And Sandy loves Bible study. She loves biblical studies. She loves reading commentaries. She loves deep thinking devotionals. And so she and Danny kind of have this life together, swapping books, going places. I don't even go with Danny. But right now, Danny's finishing his PhD in theology. And so they have this kind of common interest, unique connection, which I appreciate. And then Danny on the left and Meredith there, our oldest just, uh, of course, a couple years ago, had our first grandchild, our only grandchild right now. And there he is, little Paxton, James, Sebastian. And when, when Meredith checked into the hospital, she went into labor prematurely six months early, six weeks early. <laughs> Hello. Uh, six weeks early. Uh, she immediately, to our surprise, although she was a nurse treating COVID patients, she'd gone for half a year w without ever getting sick. But she, to her surprise, tested positive COVID as she was checked into the hospital with labor pains. So along came this little guy, and she couldn't hold him for the first 10 days. So she was quarantined, so at home. So had, had uh, Sandy out on the first flight to Dallas the next morning, and Sandy spent the next 10 days. She was the one with him. They wouldn't even let me in, but she spent the first 10 days in NICU and ICU with little Paxton. And it's amazing the bond they have to this day. It's like Sandy can walk in a room and he will run past all the rest of us, just make a beeline for her. So they have this really fun relationship. And then uh, uh, here he is, he's growing up. Here he is this past Easter Sunday morning. <laughs> So I was sitting right down here Easter, in one of the Easter services and Meredith texted that. He's all dressed up for, for church Easter Sunday morning with a bow tie like Pastor Carter always wears every Thursday. So couldn't wait to show that picture to Carter. Anyway, if you'll indulge me, the other really significant woman in my life was, of course, my mom. She died a couple years ago and we were going through our things and found this picture, which is over 70 years old. It's her wedding picture. 
and uh, she, she was a godly, wonderful lady. She, my dad had been baptized in the Holy Spirit when they were engaged, and uh, so I was able to grow up in this all my life, and I'm so grateful. And she especially was a spiritual mentor. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, and, and, and she, she was always patient with me. She let me sit on her lap when I was just a real little kid, and I talk about, I don't know if my heart's right with Jesus. And when that was the conversation, she was the mentor and the patient mom. She hold me in her arms and she pray with me. And so she was, a, she was a wonderful, wonderful mom. I just want to fast forward that picture about 65 years. And it's a little hard to see us, but that's my mom and me. And we were in a, a town where I lived when I was in preschool. Uh, on the north side, we grew up in Canada, on the north side of the Lake Superior called Thunder Bay. And this is a kindergarten I, I, I started. I was four years old, soon to turn five when I started this kindergarten. The glass round area was the kindergarten part of the larger elementary school there. And uh, so lots of memories there. One of them, speaking of my mom's spiritual formation, was, th this is a reference point to a story some of you have heard. Um, if you, uh, there are two ways to walk home uh, as a kindergarten kid. Uh, from that school. The right way was to the right of that picture. And it was a short way and you cut across a block or two and up a little bit to our house. The forbidden way was to the left. There was something about compelling mud puddles and it took longer. So my mom did not want me walking that way. So one day I just decided to walk the forbidden way. Why not? And uh, uh, so it took me longer to get home. I got home. My mom, mom said, well, well, Jimmy, what took you so long? And I go, oh, nothing. I, you know. She said, well, how did you come home? Oh, I came by the right way. Yeah, I just flat out lied to her, right? And she said, eh, no, you didn't. I was watching out the window that way, and you weren't there. So I knew I was caught red-handed. And the vision of the consequences that were about to come on my head were painful and many. Because um, you don't lie to your mom, right? Instead, she marched me into the living room. We knelt down by the couch like this with her right beside me. And she said, before you lied to me, you lied to Jesus. And we have to start by asking him to forgive you. So she taught me how to repent which has been a very helpful skill most of my life. Because sometimes I go to the left too much. But well, she was a great spiritual mentor. But it was really sad. I was four years old when I started kindergarten. I had a two-year-old brother by that point. And we were there. And it's while we were living within a few blocks of that kindergarten that I, my, I don't remember a lot of it. My brother must have dashed out in front of me. Uh, we were playing in the front yard I'm four, he's two, and he, he, he went in front of a, an oil truck, and right in front of it, so the driver couldn't see him, and the driver started up, and uh, wheels rolled over his little body and crushed him to death. And so, it was pretty tough on mom. Turned out she was, at that time, pregnant with the first of my three younger sisters, and, uh, but it was really, really tough. She doesn't talk about it a lot, or she did when she was alive. She didn't talk about it much. I'd ask her sometimes. I, I did hear that the stress was so bad and the grief that she, her skin broke out in sores all over the place. And, you know, you shouldn't have to bury your kid. But Mom did. But the one thing she did say to me all my life was if, if it wasn't for the Lord, I would have never made it. And that was my mom. She, to her dying delay, believed, day, believed in the goodness of God. In, in spite of walking through a kind of hell on earth, she believed in the goodness of God, and that deeply affected me and touched me. We right now are studying out of the book of Mark, and I'd like to go with you. This is not part of the series we're doing, but I'd like you to go to where women as a group show up for the first time in the book of Mark. And it's in Mark chapter 15. It's Mark 15 and verse 40. Jesus is hanging on the cross. 
He's just breathed his last and he's died. He was dying for you and for me. He was taking our sin on himself. He was breaking the powers of darkness and addiction and, 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 and guilt. And he was doing something out of unbelievable love for you and me so we could put our faith in him and we could live. Now Mark is a very tightly edited book. It's shorter than the other gospels and the other accounts of Jesus' life. It doesn't even start with the Christmas story because that doesn't serve Mark's purpose. Mark is writing to the church in Rome right under the nose of the emperor of the Roman Empire and this church was gonna pay a high price for following Jesus. The persecution, the suffering was gonna be awful. And so he edits together stories from Jesus' life to give them courage, to say this is the Jesus you're following and you can have courage as well and you can trust him. And so he doesn't start with the Christmas story but he records in chapter one the first sermon of Jesus. Repent for the kingdom, the rule of God is at hand. God's rule is breaking in on this dark world and there can be hope. So repent and believe the good news that God's rule is breaking in. And so he puts together stories of confrontation mixed then with teaching moments and then more confrontation. Confrontation with obstinate religious leaders, confrontations with demons, confrontation with disease as he would heal people, confrontation with the powers of this age. Why? Because the rule of God is now breaking in. And like last week we saw you know, the woman with the issue of blood that he healed, and then a few chapters later, there's this Gentile woman whose daughter is demon-possessed, and, and, and he heals, brings healing to that family. And so you see a few individual women, but, but, but Mark never, no, it, it doesn't really fit his confrontation scenario and purpose uh, to talk about the group of women that traveled with Jesus until Jesus is on the cross. And all of a sudden, Mark has these women totally take control of the narrative at the point of his crucifixion and the point of his resurrection. So it says in verse 40, some women were watching from a distance. So they were there watching the moment where Jesus died on the cross. This was heartrending. By the way, you ladies, whether you're a mom or not, I'm always amazed that your capacity to care and to love, to have empathy. I, I noticed this Sandy with our girls. I mean, if my girls are having a good day, even though they live way far away, if my girls are having a good day, Sandy's having a good day, right? But if they're having a bad day, man, Sandy's so like connected to them emotionally. I mean, empathetically. And, and, and they're having a bad day. So she, so she went, mm. And so she was kind of worrying about what one of our girls was going through the other day, two days ago. And, and she looks at me and she says, so what do you feel? First of all, I dislike that question because I rarely know how to answer it. Especially when she wants details too. So, you know, and I, I you know, I, I feel it somewhat. And, and I love my daughters, but, but I just, like two days ago, I just said, oh, I think it'll work out okay. <laughs> and she's going, you mean we don't have to worry and pray more? You know, which I'm doing right now. But, you know, I love this. And this is part of what makes sometimes ladies so powerful in prayer. You, you engage the moment at its depth and its seriousness. And, and here, where did this group of women who follow Jesus show up for the first time in Mark? It's when... Their hearts were being torn apart in agony as they watched this son in the case of Mary, the mother of Jesus, but the one that they had followed, the one who had changed their life, the one they had served with for the previous three years, and he was dying. It hurt so much. So, but they were watching from a distance, and among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. Listen, your name is really important to God, and they were all there. All of a sudden, and they burst on the scene right here, the women, and take control of the story as far as Marx is concerned. In fact, he adds this in the next verse. In Galilee, that was farther up north, 
And they were, of course, in Jerusalem where Jesus was crucified. But up north in Galilee, these women had followed him and had cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. They were there. I mean, count on it. They were there. Now, Mark's not going to talk about the guys. I'm sorry, guys. I'll talk to you on Father's Day. But, um, you know, the guys look kind of cowardly compared to the ladies here. They're kind of in hiding. And, but who's there? I mean, up in Galilee, they were there for Jesus. And here, at his worst hour, they were there for him. And they served and they ministered with him. And were a part of his team. I want to tell you, it's a thing of beauty to watch the ladies in our church serve. It's a thing of beauty. It's wonderful to see all these ladies up here leading us into the presence of God. It's wonderful when God uses ladies. He uses men too, but it's wonderful when God uses ladies. I'm going to pick a few people. Here's Renee down here. It's a thing of beauty watching her care for our young people and volunteer and serve in so many ways. I see Tiffany down here. It's a thing of beauty, just the way Tiffany has been embracing new young moms and ladies in our church that are new to the church and organizing meal trains for other ladies in the church that are in crisis and just reaching out. It's a thing of beauty. Liz, come on on our staff, who did our announcements. Wonderful job, Liz, over groups and helping with connections. It's a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty when... Oh, man, I better stop right here because there's so many of you. But it's a wonderful thing when God uses ladies. It's a beautiful thing when God uses ladies. And so this is where Mark goes with it. And then Jesus is buried, and it's now the third day. The Sabbath is over, and chapter 16, verse 1 says, When the Sabbath was over... All the courageous male disciples showed up to take hold of the day. Mm -mm. Nope. It was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, who brought spices so they might go and anoint Jesus' body. So ladies who are running the show now, and it's a beautiful thing. But very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? There was a group of ladies, but they probably weren't physically, it would take probably physically, to be honest, a group of men to roll the stones away. The stone, the big rolling stone in the face of the grave. And so on the way, they were in some ways grappling with their vulnerability. And I feel this deeply for you ladies in our society today. Uh, They said there's some things uh, that seem to be beyond our physical physical strength to either protect ourselves or to advance what we need to do. We need to get inside that tomb to dress the body of Jesus uh, with the spices and the ointments and the preserving things. And uh, who's going to move the stone away? That moment of vulnerability, of kind of having to face their own weakness in and of themselves, um, does make me want to say, we we get that, ladies. I, I don't know, in some ways, a time you've ever been more vulnerable. You're vulnerable to sexual harassment like never before in the workplace. Some of you have been victims of sexual abuse. We have yet in our culture to do equal pay for equal work with men. Um, We have violence in our cities like never before, it seems, right now. And women especially are victimized. You know, I don't carry pepper spray around with me, but many of you ladies have to. I, don't, I wouldn't think twice about running to the store at 11 o'clock at night, but I'd never think of my wife going alone to the store late at night. I mean, there's just a vulnerability right now that you live with, and uh, we understand. Who's going to make some things happen beyond what we seem to have power 
against or for. And uh, recently, a candidate for the Supreme Court in her confirmation hearings was asked, could you define a woman? And she said no. And she was speaking the language of our culture today. We are now being reduced to a non-person that nobody can figure out or define. But I want to tell you, Jesus, and I don't mean this tritely, Jesus notices you. And he knows you by name. You're precious in his sight. And he understands your vulnerability. And he's the one who will come and hedge about you. Because he does make a way for these women. For Mark goes on to say, and when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. God stepped into their vulnerability and rolled the stone away. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, this would be an angel, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. They were alarmed. They were courageous, but in this moment, they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said, the angel said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. Well, he has risen. And who gets the news first? The guys, uh uh-uh, a bunch of cowards. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> the ladies. And then, and then, he is not here. See the place where they laid him. And then, verse 7, go tell those guys. Go tell his disciples. And Peter. <laughs> Poor Peter. Peter was a major mentor to Mark, and Mark writes a lot of his gospel from firsthand accounts from Peter. And so, um, and he kind of treats Peter a little different all through this gospel. But that's a funny one, and Peter. I didn't reveal myself first to Peter, but to you, you ladies. So go tell them. Now, women were unfortunately second class citizens 2,000 years ago in the ancient Near East when this took place and their testimony was not admissible in a court of law. So if you're gonna make up a religion, you would never write it this way. That the singularly most important event in that religion, Jesus dying and rising, being surrounded totally by the narrative that women are controlling. And then women, whose testimony wasn't considered credible, women being the first ones that testified to the fact Jesus rose from the dead. You don't, you wouldn't make that up 2,000 years ago. But this isn't made up. This is God revealing himself to these ladies in a very powerful and beautiful way. And so verse 9 says, when Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. So they realize the tomb's empty. But then Jesus, as Mary Magdalene is wandering around, wondering what's going on, Jesus has a personal encounter with her. The first person to actually see the resurrected Christ, not just be told to announce it, but the first woman to see the resurrected Christ was Mary. Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. That's a nice thing to say about her. But I want to tell you, You ladies can be as bound and broken as any guy. But Jesus had set her free from the demons that haunted and controlled and addicted her life. Jesus. We sang about it this morning. We speak Jesus over addiction. We speak Jesus over sickness. We speak Jesus over emptiness and darkness. And Jesus, who probably a couple of years later had brought healing to this lady's life, We have no indication she was married. We had no indication she was a mom. But Jesus had set her free. And she was the first one to encounter him. So guys, we're not left out of this story because here's where we're going to end. In fact, I want to invite you all to stand. And I want...
the worship team, if you would come, as we want to just do something to bless the ladies in the house. But there's a verse, there's two verses, that Peter will end up preaching on the day of Pentecost. This will happen uh, close to a month and a half after Jesus rose from the dead, on the day of Pentecost. And Peter's going to preach, and he's going to quote a prophet from the Old Testament. Because on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came to fill people, to make people, all of us, his mouthpiece, to empower us, to be sent, to go, to serve him. And, and let's put the, the words up on the screen. I want you to read this out loud. And everything that's in yellow is, is everywhere that includes the ladies. And so, guys, I want you to read it extra loud. When we get to yellow words, extra loud, you guys. And you ladies can join in. Because this is what Peter preaches, quoting Joel. Joel. All together, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, even on my servants, both men and women. Go get it, women. And I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. You guys will prophesy. You ladies will prophesy in the name of Jesus. God's Spirit is for every one of us. That's why we celebrated women going all over the world in missions today because it's not only the guys, it's the ladies. And God just wants to bless you. We're going to sing a song of blessing over you ladies. Uh, you all won't get up here, but I'd like to invite, there won't be room, but I want to invite all the ladies. You don't need to be a mom. You don't need to be old. You don't need to be young, particularly. Just, just all the way from the girls up towards, up to the older ladies. Not old ladies, just older ladies. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. Um, I, I, just, I, I just want to just, as your pastor, have a word of prayer over you, and we're going to sing a blessing over you. And if you actually like to come and stand shoulder to shoulder in this altar area, as we often do as a church, I'd like you to come, and there won't be room for everybody. You're welcome to stay where you are and still get in this blessing, but you ladies, come on up and uh, stand with each other. God said, I'm going to put my spirit on your sons and your daughters, on the men and the women, and Everyone's going to prophesy. Everyone's going to be my minister. Everyone's going to be my mouthpiece. And God's Spirit's going to be upon you. And we, we love you, ladies. We thank you. I'm so grateful to be able to pastor a church with truly mighty women of God. And I'm grateful to pastor a church where some people are just figuring Jesus out. That's where some of you ladies may be right now, just figuring this out. But he's come to speak freedom in your life. He's come to put his spirit upon your life. He's come to say, you're important to me. You're a big part of the story. In fact, according to Mark, the most important part of the story is where the ladies show up when he dies and rises again. And Lord, I thank you for these women of God. I thank you for the spirit of God on their lives. And I just pray as they stand here, some of them just hand in hand, I just pray that your power will be upon them. Lord, I pray you'll build them up. I pray on this very complicated day for some of us, Lord Jesus, that you'll heal the brokenhearted and you'll satisfy the longings otherwise unfulfilled with your presence and with your grace. I pray you'll heal where there's mourning and grief. I pray that you'll strengthen where there's more responsibilities in their hands than maybe they feel they can handle in their vulnerability. I pray you'll protect them in Jesus' name. And they're coming and they're going. May they be blessed. May they be blessed going out and blessed coming in. May the blessing of the Lord attend to them. May they walk in the wisdom of God. May they walk in the love of God. May the presence of God be incredibly real to them in these months ahead. May they walk with their heads high and their hearts filled. May they walk, O oh God, in strength, not their own, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord. May the blessing, may the blessing of the Lord be upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you guys, you help us sing here. Shine upon.
upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let's look that again. The Lord bless. The Lord. Sing it out, man. Let it be. So be it today. And I Together, let this blessing be. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family, and their children, and their children. Children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children. Oh, 
We thank you, Lord, and are going out and are coming in in the morning, in the evening. My God, we thank you that you're all around us. You're before us and behind us. And that you're for us and not against us. That in Christ we belong to you and we love you. We thank you for the beauty that you would adorn us with. We thank you for the presence of Jesus within us. And indeed, may the blessing of the Lord be upon our sisters in Christ. Thank you for these wonderful women of God. And Lord, if any are just on that beginning point, we just pray that even this morning, on this Mother's Day, you will, you will be real to them. And we will just open our hearts to you and start that adventure of walking with you. We love you and praise you. And I thank you, Lord, for the prayers agreeing together with all my brothers in the room for these wonderful ladies. Thank you for this. And we bless you. We thank you for the joy of being together in your presence today. In Jesus' name, amen.